Dr. Berger, Principal Investigator and Executive Director of Plate, Florida Regional Center of Advanced Technological Education, funded by the National Science Foundation and housed at Hillsborough Community College, Florida since 2004. Plate serves the state of Florida and is involved in outreach and recruitment of students into technical career pathways, produces award-winning curriculum design and reform for secondary and post-secondary career and technical education programs, provides a variety of professional development for STEM and technical educators focused on advanced technologies. She earned a BA in chemistry from Magnus Scott College and both a BS in engineering science and PhD in civil and environmental engineering from the University of South Florida, where her research focused on membrane separation technology for water treatment. I love that. She has over 20 years of experience developing and delivering curricula for engineering and engineering technologies for and to K-20 educators across the country. Dr. Barter is a licensed professional engineer in Florida, holds a licensed patent, and she's absolutely an icon. <laughs> an icon? Oh, I've never been an icon before. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try to be quick. Um, I don't really have a, a whole lot to talk about uh, Flate, just to give everybody an overview of what some of the areas we work in. There's uh, not enough time to talk about our details, but I do want to talk about some of the work related to energy that we've been um, working on. So we have we generally group our activities in these three areas for curriculum, professional development, and outreach. So all working with education and educators across the state of Florida, and. Um, we are one of the National Science Foundation ATE centers, and those centers are directed to work on two-year technical education programs and advanced and emerging technology. So it's a perfect fit for community colleges. Uh, we work in those three areas that were mentioned earlier to make really strong programs so we can support the technician workforce in this country. And there's about 42 centers around the the country on different kinds of technologies, and we're really focused on manufacturing and, and those uh, industries that have similar related skill sets, and, and, and energy is certainly one of those. So all of that probably uh, is encapsulated in our, in our vision. Um, we want to be and have wanted to be, and we think we're getting there to be Florida's leading resource for education and training, um, serving the advanced manufacturing and um, high um, performance production organizations in the state of Florida. And uh, again, our three areas of work, it's always hard to, when you have a complicated organization, to separate things into um, pockets. But um, our Made in Florida campaign is our outreach um, umbrella, where we take students on tours. We run summer camps for, for uh, young kids and high school students. Uh, we just do a lot of dissemination and about manufacturing, uh, particularly uh, captured in the MadeInFlorida.org website. Um, we work a lot with uh, people like Catherine at the Department of uh, Education, trying to make sure that the frameworks that, that uh, define the programs in Florida for manufacturing in the K-12 and the community college and the tech centers um, really aligns with industry needs. So um, it's kind of a... a Catherine works directly with her with her programs, but in the manufacturing area, um, I work with uh, the colleges, and then we also I work do a lot of the work directly with uh, uh, the Department of Ed supervisor, in, that, in this case uh, Ted Norman, a guy named Ted Norman. So we we do the same kinds of things. I just usually try to funnel the work that the colleges do and and make sure they're uh, kind of on track that are working in the manufacturing um, career cluster. And lastly, a lot of professional development like this um, event today and lots of other events targeted at, at different uh, audiences from um, high school teachers, uh, middle school teachers, the college teachers, and um, mixed groups like we have today. Okay, so FEST came into our, um, our life and energy specific when uh, the Florida Energy Systems Consortium was funded um, a few years ago. They had, it was a workforce component, and, and FLAIT was named as the, the organization that would uh, coordinate that effort for the two-year college a part of that grant that's held at the University of Florida. And um, so we, developing a curriculum that was related to energy, came under that umbrella for the two-year college programs. And that's, um, again, part of what we're doing here today. And um, along those lines, I encouraged my colleagues at, the, at that time, Brevard, now Eastern Florida State College, to um, apply for a, 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 their own NSF grant related to energy. And the uh, EST2 project was funded um, a few years ago. 
And it was a consortium of uh, the then Brevard, now Eastern Florida, uh, Florida State College at Jacksonville, and Tallahassee Community College, and, and, and FLATE, and to work on alternative energy and energy efficiency frameworks um, in our degree program on, that's uh, under the engineering technology degree. So those folks are sitting up here in the, in the front of the table. Cheryl, who is now no longer at Eastern Florida, but was the principal investigator, Ernie Friend from, from Florida State, and um, uh, Rick Frazier from Tallahassee. So um, one thing, if Catherine talked a lot about frameworks um, uh, earlier, and this revision process or the review process they go through. Uh, so the only thing I'm going to say about those is that it, it, there are some components that are really important when we build frameworks, and I've got some bullets here that define those. Um, industry review, we talked about that, to validate these technical skills. Um, it involves the targeted occupation list. It involves the Department of Labor occupational codes. Um, it needs to involve the regional workforce boards and their needs projections in different areas. Uh, workplace and employability skills are, are part of the mix. It's kind of sliding over to some common core or basic skills. They keep changing the names of some of those things. Um, and then, of course, as in any degree program, there's some general education component that's, that's built into those as well. So it's, um, it's a comprehensive uh, program, a comprehensive attack to education for, for to technical education. Okay, so the degree program that, um, that we put in place in the state for manufacturing looks, this is our career pathway. Um, it's called engineering technology. It's got built in some, some uh, alignments to national certifications, so MSSC. But the important piece is that two of the specializations deal directly with energy. So we built this program with a, a technical core and 10 specialization tracks. Now, well, there's now 10. They started with about five. And um, those two that relate to this audience in particular are alternative energy systems and industrial energy efficiency. So the industrial energy efficiency is just hot, uh, hot out the door and is in need of coursework, um, cor new courses to be developed, and we're in the process of doing that, that right now. So it's not actually offered at any colleges um, yet. And there's still, like I said, some coursework that has to be done. And this is what we're working on in partnership with the EST2 folks. Um, to get those in place. Um, I just put in here the frameworks that we developed. Um, again, under these frameworks, there's a whole bunch of benchmarks, but just the high level uh, skills um, that are needed for this particular part of the engineering technology degree are tracked. Um, you can see what kinds of topics are, are covered there. I'm not going to read through all of those. And um, that part was a little bit easier than the next part. This energy efficiency thing was kind of an elusive, um, <laughs> elusive skill set. And we did a lot of work talking to industry around the state and around the country as to what this was, what it, what it could look like. Um, some of the information that we collected is, is kind of captured here. Some of the jobs that they might get that came back to us were energy technicians, environmental technicians, sustainability planners, auditors. Um, smart grid technicians. Um, none of those really told us a whole lot about what these people were going to do. So the um, a kind of, um, it wasn't really a DACOM process, what was that called? Cheryl. The focus group, we, we uh, got some, we did the survey, we did a second survey, and then we did a, a pretty intensive one day focus group to define um, the frameworks and the um, align the courses that would have to be, that these frameworks would be taught in. And um, so these are the frameworks that are now part of the ET degree, the standard, the standard levels uh, for this particular program. Again, it's not offered anywhere yet in the, in the state because we're still developing the actual courses for that. Um, and in any good educational plan, there has to be some, some kind of pathways and there are a number of certificates in this program. Uh, college credit certificates, um, as well as the capability of you know, getting the, earning the whole two-year degree, and um, all of those articulate directly to um, four-year programs, either bachelors of applied science programs at a number of different colleges, or um, the bachelors of science in engineering technology at, at um, Daytona State. 
Uh, so right now in the state of Florida, these are the colleges that offer programs that are under this particular umbrella. Um, Catherine talked about some others under the energy cluster, but the ones in the, that are housed in the manufacturing cluster um, are, are here. So there's the alternative energy sort of at the top, um, the, both the certificate and the degree program, and on the right-hand side of the colleges that offer those. And then the second um, group is just, um, oh, sorry, the top is all the certificates in the two areas, and the bottom are the degree programs. And on the right-hand side, you can see which, where they're being offered in the, um, around the state. So there's still nothing in that one group. So I'm going to ask um, Rick to just talk a little bit about the professional development that the EST2 team has been kind of heading up for, um, with uh, FESC to as part of their grant project and to um, show off energy in the state of Florida and energy curriculum. Oh, you snuck up behind me. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. We'll try and make this real brief. Um, both Ernie and I, um, along with um, uh, Eastern Florida, uh, we have focused on doing some professional development with both uh, our own faculty and then also uh, working with secondary uh, uh, teachers. Uh, it's been really interesting because in part of the project that NSF is really interested in is looking at consistency across the board. So what we've done as far as the uh, three schools or the three prime schools is that we've tried to create curriculum and uh, across the board that we're doing with each population that we kind of interact with and so we've been tracking this data. So this is our last year of our project. And so we'll have another round of doing workshops with um, uh, our focus, at least at TCC, is going to be on the secondary uh, teachers and who we're really interested in, obviously, is looking at the STEM folks. Uh, primarily, we focus on the, the science folks that we have in our, in our district, so. Um, I think I could just use this one, right? Sure. Um, yeah, so one, you know, one of the things that we do is uh, summer camps, which are pretty effective. We're dealing with high school kids. and. Um, so we try to focus the summer camps on not just a bunch of fun exercises, but how, what they learn, how does that relate maybe to a career they might be interested in. And um, so those have been pretty successful. We've got one more round that we're going to try to do. We've got some residual grant money that we've got from the final year of the grant. So we're going to run several more this, uh, this summer. Um, so we ran four camps in 212 and uh, three camps in uh, 11. We'll probably do three or four more this summer as well. And I guess that's it for us. So, so basically, the, the, the energy efficiency um, certificate that Marilyn talked about, I think, you know, certainly there's, there's lots of projects out there that talk about the envelope of a building. I mean, there's, you know, lots of research out there on that. What we focused on was the plant floor. So in an industrial environment, uh, manufacturing environment, you've got a bunch of equipment. That equipment uses a lot of resources, electricity. So we, the, the, the goal for the industrial efficiency um, certificate was to create a program that teaches technicians how to save their company um, energy costs on the plant floor. And uh, so we got a lot of great feedback from the business community. Um, I think Tim, uh, uh, Tim, one of our one of the folks on our team, estimated that uh, that a, a person, you know, an individual technician on the plant floor could easily save their company hundred thousand dollars a year in electricity costs. Well, I mean that's a pretty good investment, I think, from the um, from the company standpoint. They've got somebody making forty or fifty thousand dollars a year that's saving the company hundred thousand dollars in energy costs. Um, that's a pretty big deal. Um, so we're hoping uh, to get this thing off the ground pretty soon and actually start getting some students in it as soon as possible and, um, and then uh, see how it goes from there. Anybody have any questions? Okay, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, you're not done. Okay. <laughs> The others. So where's Beth? Beth, you want to talk about your slides? So we have a couple of um, updates we like to, to share what other colleges are doing. And um, Beth is here from South Florida State College. They had an NSF project that was funded. She's new to the college, but she's going to 
going to tell us what, what they've been working on down there. Hi. I just, I am new. I started August 20th of 2013. So, um, but I did my graduate work here in Florida, so I'm a Gator, so this is not entirely new. But, um, so what I am doing as this project is I was hired as the lead instructor um, to start up this bioenergy education program. And we're working on two different tracks. The first one you see there is biomass cultivation. And that has already been approved by the State Department of Education. And you see there we'll be offering both an AS as well as a CC certificate. The biofuels technology um, that is, has just been revised and has just been resubmitted so that we're waiting to see um, what Ted Norman has to say about that, but that should be falling into the manufacturing cluster. Um, so I'm working on right now um, beginning to make contacts and really help the program get established. Doing anything in this kind of field at South Florida State is brand new for us. We have a power line, um, power lineman training program, but that's been it so far. So we're, we're jumping into um, a, new, a new field for us. And part of the challenge has been, um, depending where you're from here in the region, um, BP was going to build a cellulosic ethanol plant in Southern Highlands County. But then the Deepwater Horizon incident occurred, you may recall, and um, BP pulled out. So we are having to shift our focus a bit from just cellulosic into a broader range of options for biofuels. So we're really just getting started. So that's what we're up to. Thanks, thanks, Beth. And uh, Andy, I'm going to have some slides here on what's going on at, at Valencia. So as uh, Andy comes up, he's going to talk a little bit about the campus and what they've been doing to save their own um, energy as an institution. And I want to remind you, because we're still so proud, that last year we got to announce that HCC won an um, award for the efforts they had been doing in this area for campus-wide sustainability that um, involved uh, FLATE, the EST2 energy projects we've been working on um, as well, and the FESC work that we've been doing. Uh, so it's kind of, it's nice to see that the institutions are really focused on this. Of course, we know there's a, a bottom line that they see that's uh, nice and green or black that, <laughs> that um, is a little bit of impetus, but, it's, but still, it's a good motivation and um, lots of holistic, um, Redos in the campus life, I think, are kind of important for all of us, changing the, the mental or mentality and attitude towards um, energy use and around there. So let's see what would happen at Valencia. All right. Thank you, Marilyn. Andy Ray, I'm the program chair for building construction, civil surveying, and drafting design on the west campus of Valencia. And we just have a couple slides here. I want to say also I was uh, just recently announced that I, I was awarded a, a sabbatical for fall of 2015. I'll be spending five months in Europe. And I'm, I want to develop some contacts with some German companies and German uh, universities, as well as throughout uh, Scandinavia and, and the Netherlands. I've done an international exchange with the Netherlands uh, previously, and I want to try to get some more uh, contacts in renewable energy and the ties to business related to that. Uh, the, the goal is to take some students over for a uh, study abroad studying business and how it relates to uh, energy conscious design and, and renewable energy. So uh, this is just what we've been up to on our campus. Um, we're now the largest uh, educational institution in Central Florida. We signed the, uh, the agreement back in 2009. We've been doing recycling. We've got six lead gold or equivalent buildings on our campuses. Um, we've got a commitment from our president that all future buildings will be at least lead silver. Uh, we do have a sustainability across the curriculum course and faculty development for our faculty. Uh, it's a 20-hour uh, PD course. We, we actually get paid to do professional development. So uh, this is the fifth course. I, I help teach that because I co-chair the sustainability committee. And we've had 48 uh, that have completed it so far. Uh, part of the effort goes to our staff, especially Robert Hickman, has done a lot to uh, redo the chillers on our campuses and 
and uh, incorporate some of these energy conscious uh, features. So we've got a new chiller plant. So we've reduced our energy use per square foot significantly over the last several years, um, even as we've been adding buildings and campuses. Uh, we've announced another new campus down in Poinciana. So we've got five existing campuses and another one online. And we've done some EV type uh, activities, showcasing things with Earth Day events and Tree Campus USA and through our learning days and, and so on. Uh, we have uh, 10 charging stations on our West Campus. Uh, we've, we've brought out the, uh, the hydrogen car. If you've ever had a chance to ride in the hydrogen car, that's a million dollar vehicle. And then uh, we've got uh, activities for students where we're trying to educate them on, on use of electricity and uh, electric vehicles and, and battery powered vehicles. And uh, we just announced that we've saved over $2 million. Thank you.